Good morning, dear students. Today, I will do this particular lesson by the title of The Bishop of Daniel. Pronounced as The Bishop of Daniel in French, spelt as D I G N E, but pronunciation is Daniel. Please get it right. A French word, Daniel. So before we begin with the lesson, please have your books open at page 88 to have a look at the author of this story. This story is an extract, it's a short story taken from this important novel first published in 1862 and considered to be the greatest novel of the 19th century. The name of the novel is Les Miserables in French Les Miserables the author is Victor Hugo. In English, it is pronounced as Victor Hugo. In French, it is pronounced as Victor Hugo. The H is silent. So let us have a look at the author. His dates are 1802, 1885. He was a French poet, one who wrote poetry, novelist, one who wrote novels, and a dramatist. He began to write verses early in life and earned a royal pension from Louis XVIII. Louis XVIII was the French emperor for his collection of poems called Odes et Poesis Diverses. Again, he earned a royal pension for his work, Odes et Poesis Diverses. So he was indeed a profound, well known poet, novelist and a dramatist. Some of his popular works include The Hunchback of Notre Dame or Notre Dame and Les Miserables in French Les Miserables. This extract from Les Miserables has been illustrated by Marsh Williams. Illustrated meaning the drawings that you see in your book has been done by this important person called Marshall Williams. So, again coming back to the title, the Bishop of Daniel. Bishop, a priest in charge of this little church circle. Churches under his authority and before we move on in detail with the lesson let's have a look at a few questions so I want you to stop for a moment and think what do you have in your house that has been with your family for many years. What is that one thing or a few things that has been there with your family for a long, long time? It has been passed on to your family and uh, there is a thought that it will be passed on to the next generation. So, what is this something that has been there for many long years in the family and it 
has been passed down from one generation to the next. Who did it belong to? And we think who did it belong to? We have discussed this during the online classes. I am doing this again for some of the students who had missed out for some reason on the online classes as well as for those who did attend the online classes. So, stop for a moment and think. Who did it belong to? Why is it valuable to your family? Definitely, you will get an answer as to it does not hold as much material value as it holds sentimental value. You will find that whatever you have in your house will not be of great material value. It will not fetch a lot of money, but it will certainly have a lot of sentimental, emotional attachment and value to that particular thing. It could be a portrait, it could be a, a wristwatch, it could be a wall clock, it could be an armchair, it could be a piece of uh, writing, something that has been handed down from generation to generation and has lasted and will hopefully last in the future as well. So, do think, write it down, if possible, scan the house, search, ask, but no, what is that one thing? Every house will have that one or more than one important, valuable, what we can also call an asset that has uh, not much of material value but of great sentimental and emotional value attached to it because it has some connection with the past, the lineage of the family from grandfather to grandson and it will pass on. So, here, right at this page 84, the same questions are asked. What do you have in your house that has been with your family for many years? Who did it belong to? Why is it valuable? Now, just below it, the Bishop of Denny had given everything valuable except for a set of silverware and a pair of silver candlesticks that had been given to him by his mother. So that is why the silverware and uh, a pair of candlesticks which he owned as valuables was valuable to him in fact because it had been given to him by his mother. So there was great emotional and uh, memory attached to it. So the candlesticks and the silverware were the only valuable possessions which the bishop had. Nothing more than that. So by this we can understand that he wasn't leading a very luxurious life. He wasn't leading an extravagant life. He had a very simple, modest life. Uh, one night, Jean Valjean, the word, the name in fact, is pronounced as in French, Jean Valjean. The main character of the story in Les Miserables, he is the protagonist, the main character, who is in the novel an ex convict, a person who had been convicted, who had been proved 
guilty in court for the crime that he had committed and punished for the crime. So Jean Valjean had been proved guilty of having stolen a loaf of bread to feed his poor hungry family and he was sentenced to prison for 19 long years. Now, after having served that period of 19 long years, he was released and in search of shelter, food and employment, he had reached this little town called Denny. So, the meaning of ex-convict here, I had given you the meaning. I have written it down here for you. I am reading it out so that you can copy it down if you have missed out on it. So, ex-convict, who was the ex-convict? Jean Valjean. And who was this Jean Valjean? He was the main character of this novel called Les Miserables by Victor Hugo, so as to say in English. Now, an ex-convict, a person who had been convicted of a crime, did serve the term in prison and released on completing the imprisonment period and set free to go for having successfully served his punishment. So ex-convict. Now gentlemen, let us have a look at the remaining information on page 84. So one night Jean Valjean, an ex-convict who was jailed for 19 years for stealing a loaf of bread, as I told you earlier, to feed his hungry family, comes to town of Denny, where no one will give him food, where no one wanted him around, where no one wanted to see him around and when no one would allow him in, welcome him home or into their homes for he had been a convict in the past. So he was left with no choice than to start knocking on the doors of people seeking for help. So, gentlemen, he had nowhere to go and he began to move through town seeking a place to sleep and some and for some food. Finally, he knocks on the bishop's door when all else had denied, when everybody else had denied. He had no other option. The last option was he went to the bishop's house as he was directed by a woman and he went there knocking on the door of the bishop. So with this let us start reading and understanding the lesson. If you see your text, the first picture depicts or shows Jean Valjean in tattered clothes uh, with a satchel, with a bag and his condition is not very good. He has a torn cap on his head, uh, a stick in his hand, his clothes are shabby and he is in conversation with the bishop. Now what does he say? I am a tired and hungry ex.
convict can I stay he pleaded the bishop if you see in the picture has a very bright smiling warm face there behind him is his sister and at the doorway was or as you see in the picture standing was Madam McLoy. So, what did the bishop reply? Monsieur, Mr. Monsieur means Mr. in French. Come and sit and warm yourself. He was the first person in the town of Daniel not to shut the door onto his face. Instead, he acted just in the opposite way as compared to the rest. He, instead of denying and rejecting him, he welcomed him with affection, with genuine kindness, with true kindness. He was not pretending to be kind. He was truly kind towards this stranger. So below the picture, the description, the narration is given to you. The modest house that the woman pointed to was occupied. The modest means the simple, ordinary house which a woman had pointed uh, to, guiding, telling, showing Jean Valjean that he could go and approach the folks there, the people who lived there uh, for food and shelter and there was every chance that he would be welcomed. So he, having no other choice, did so. He knocked on the door. So the modest house that the woman pointed to was occupied, was uh, you know, the residents who were living there occupied by the Bishop of Daniel, his sister, Mademoiselle, French in French, Mademoiselle, Baptistine, and their old servant, Madame McLoy. So three people lived in that house. It was a very modest, humble, simple, ordinary house. The Bishop had never lived in the church palace. So, by this we can understand that he was a benevolent person. B-E-N-E-B-O-L-E-N-T Benevolent. Benevolent means he was kind, sharing, understanding. Uh, he was charitable. He had given away the church palace in which he could have actually stayed to the townspeople so that it could be used as a hospital to treat the sick. Now, as we move on with the story, kindly understand at this point of time that during that time there was uh, an outbreak of cholera and this disease, just like this pandemic, was raging through many countries in Europe. Uh, so was it in France. So people were dying and there was chaos, there was political chaos, there was economic crisis. The living conditions of the people were very poor and Bishop, the Bishop, sorry, being a kind and a spiritual man, having promised God to serve God uh, with all his heart and soul, decided to for, uh, decided to forego, do without the luxuries of the palace, uh, the church palace, and gave it for the common good of the people to treat the sick in the town of Daniel. He lived simply and his door was always open to the many 
poor, sick and needy. So this proves that his door was always open. He was kind enough to accept and share with the poor and needy. He was there for the poor and needy. He wasn't a selfish man. Even tonight, even that night, when rumors of a dangerous stranger circulated around the town, when this news went around uh, in the town of Daniel, that there was this dreadful, this dreaded criminal, this dangerous criminal, rumor was, uh, in this case, rumor uh, was this story that went around, uh, was spread among the people that circulated, that was dispersed uh, among the people about this dangerous uh, stranger. And who was this dangerous stranger? Jean Valjean. Uh, he was in town, so people were afraid. It was a difficult time and uh, having to accommodate to accommodate a stranger like him who had served a prison sentence was not a good idea uh, that people would um, give much attention to or would want to have a stranger in their house. They wouldn't want such a man at all. So the bishop would not lock his front door despite knowing that there was this dangerous man in town, uh, this rumor that went around, he left his door open. So much to Valjean's amazement, he was surprised, he was taken aback. When he banged violently on the door with his fist, he received a warm welcome by the bishop. He was surprised when everybody in town rejected and denied, did not accede to his requests. Here was this man who wasn't like the rest. He was different. He was truly welcoming. He was genuinely welcoming and interested in serving him, uh, being hospitable to him. So the next picture you see, uh, Jean Valjean talking to the bishop and you see the bishop's uh, face is uh, illustrated to be very happy with bright eyes and genuinely kind to accept a stranger like him uh, into his house. Uh, you didn't say, get out dog, well, Jean told the bishop, meaning to say that he wasn't like the rest who uh, had chased him out calling him a dog. Slowly, Valjean's hard, gloomy expression softened to one of delight. So, on realizing how kind and how true the bishop was in his action of accepting and welcoming him, his heart, his uh, this feeling of hatred that he had in his heart for the society, for those people who had punished him for, for just stealing a loaf of bread and uh, this harsh, hard uh, punishment that he had received to serve a sentence of 19 years in prison, he had become, you know, insensitive. He had become very hard in his heart. Uh, he was sad because of this long period of suffering, want and poverty, this hard life that he had lived. So this expression suddenly changed when he realized the bishop was actually truly kind to him and not pretending to be kind to him. Uh, his face showed that he was happy being accepted.
respected by the bishop, being treated well by the bishop. Uh, the next picture shows Valjean and the bishop along with Madame Magloire and his sister Mademoiselle Baptistine at the dining table. So the bishop said, you have seen much suffering, but eat now. Pacifying him, comforting him, he asked him to have his meal that was served before him. Uh, and what was Valjean's reply? Your food is as simple as a Wagner's. But I am grateful, so you see. We will come a little later how this man was transformed and as the, as the story progresses through the novel, he becomes a force of goodness in the world. He changes, he transforms. But one thing remains is that he cannot escape his criminal past that haunts him. And the long term that he had served, he had you, he had, uh, you know, uh, lost his youth and a lot of time. And he was hateful for that. Uh, he wanted revenge. But at the same time, there was this transformation in him and he had become someone who was uh, a force of goodness in the world. So, gentlemen, he said to the bishop, the food was nothing grand that one would have expected him being the bishop. And in those days, uh, bishops, priests, uh, and people of uh, religious affinity did have a comfortable life, so as to say. So he was a little astounded to see that the food which the bishop himself was going to have along with him was very simple that of a Wagner's uh, food, uh, the kind of food a Wagner would serve in his house. A Wagner, uh, a, a person who used to drive a wagon, a, a horse drawn wagon. You understand? So in those days um, there was no um, modern cars and jeeps like you experience today and you have the fortune to uh, enjoy. So there were these little wagons pulled by horses, mules, donkeys, uh, so uh, a Wagner would not earn much. So he, when he observed the food served before him, he was taken aback, a little surprised that it was very simple and he wasn't actually expecting that. So he said, though the food was simple, the same kind of food that one would receive if a person had gone to a Wagner's house, comparing the bishop to be of the same status and value that of a Wagner, he was grateful to receive that, though he compared the food to be very simple just as one would receive in a Wagner's house. Yet he was grateful because he needed that food desperately. He was hungry, tired, exhausted. So he was grateful, he was thankful towards the bishop for the offering that he had made to him. Uh, Madame McLeod placed two silver candlesticks on the table these along with some silver curtain were the bishop's only valuables. So, along with the silver went, uh, along with uh, 
some curtain, you know, curtain meaning knives, forks, spoons, uh, used for eating. And in North America, uh, they called cutlery as uh, or cutlery as uh, utensils, especially knives and things like that, which are used in cutting and preparing food. So this was all that he had. And what were these valuable possessions? Some silver cutlery and these two silver candlesticks. He had given everything else to the poor as stated in the story. So this also speaks very strongly as a proof of his benevolence, his kindness and his uh, charitable nature. So gentlemen, in the next picture you see, after dinner the bishop handed a candlestick to, uh, a candlestick sorry, to Valjean and guided him to an alcove room next to his own. Uh, what is an alcove room? A room that was just beside a room beside another, a small little room. An alcove is a, some kind of a structure that is used in houses. Uh, it is especially made in the walls, in the cracks of the walls are utilized to make alcoves to exhibit few little items but here an alcove room was a room beside another so this particular room where he was asked to sleep that night was beside the bishop's room and what did they talk about how do you know i am not a murderer god will take care of that the bishop assured to him that he was no one to judge him and his actions. Well, Jean questioned him, how do, you, how do you know I am not a murderer? So he wanted to know from the bishop what made him think that he was not a murderer because he had welcomed him without questioning him on his past. He hadn't asked him who he was, where he had come from, uh, about his uh, imprisonment, about the 19 years that he had been in prison. There was no question on that because the bishop did not want to know about his past. He just treated him for the person he was at that moment being present there in his house. And he says that he was no one would judge him and his actions. It was upon God to reward him or punish him. He was no one. God would take care of all that. So, well, Jean was very exhausted. He was extremely exhausted. Uh, he was exhausted. Extremely wouldn't make any sense here. Uh, so, he was extremely tired. He was exhausted because he had walked a long way uh, fending for food and shelter, searching for food and shelter. He did not even climb between the sheets to cover himself, but lay on top of the bed and fell into a sound sleep soon. As the pictures illustrate, a few mom moments later, everyone in the little house was asleep. They were all sound asleep. The next page, gentlemen, page 86, please follow the pictures. Uh, as the cathedral clock, as the cathedral, the big clock at the cathedral, the huge church, struck two in the morning, Valjean woke up. He lay thinking of his years as a prisoner, of his poverty, 
suffering and the poor life that he had led for a small mistake that he had committed and his lost youth, the time that he had lost when he was a young man, when he could have been uh, productive, when he could have found a job, where he could have built a life, where he could have uh, hoped for a better future that was all gone and he was haunted by those thoughts. What was he haunted by? He was haunted by his past. He was haunted by uh, the number of years that he had served as a prisoner, uh, the suffering and pain and the lost time, his youth, his young age when he could have been uh, contributing, productive and could have built a life for himself that was gone. So, he was plagued, he was haunted by his past. Uh, he thought of many things including the bishop's silver and this thought struck him. It came floating into his mind. He was reminded of the bishop's silver candlesticks, the curtlery and he was tempted. He had great resentment, great hatred towards uh, the society for having punished him. I told you earlier. He had this feeling of vengeance in his heart. This feeling of revenge in his heart. And the only way he thought uh, he could satisfy that mm, revenge and this feeling of hatred was to punish someone. And in this case, he decided that the bishop was the right person for him to do so. So, Valjean got up crept into the bishop's room quietly. He saw the bishop's goodness lit up his whole face. So, when he saw the bishop fast asleep and there was this glow on the bishop's face and what was this glow about? It was a glow of his uh, peaceful and happy life that he led. There was no feeling of worry, anxiety, or there was no feeling of any kind of um, the exact term would be something to hide about. He was extremely happy, peaceful, and there was this uh, radiation of, you know. Uh, this brightness that was radiating from glowing and coming out, you know, emanating, radiating, there was this glow that was being given out. This glow was very bright, his face was very bright. Why was it bright? Because he led a simple, kind, and honest life. Therefore, this glow was a glow of a peaceful and an honest man's spiritual happiness that he had in his heart. So, gentlemen, what was this glow about? His happiness and his honesty which made him feel peaceful. So for a moment, Valjean was overcome by emotion. He was now touched by the bishop's kindness and how peaceful it seemed to him. The, the glow of happiness, peacefulness, kindness and honesty that was being radiated from uh, the bishop's face touched his heart that here was this man who had been truly kind to him without any pretense and he was so touched for being accepted by the bishop into his house have, having been treated well and allowed 
accommodation, food. So he was moved with emotions for the bishop and that he was a good, honest, kind, simple, spiritual man, a man of God. So he was touched by these emotions. The moments passed, the moment passed, and he took the silver cutlery from the cupboard in the bishop's room. So this emotion of, of admiring the bishop's kindness and being grateful to him, he was also grateful, thankful for being uh, treated well by the bishop, for having been treated well by the bishop, for having been accepted by the bishop. But soon that emotion passed and he was overcome by this temptation to steal from the bishop. Uh, so he took the silver curtain from the cupboard in the bishop's room. He stuffed it into his bag. He, he pushed it all into his bag and crept out of the room jumped out of the window and was gone. He ran across the garden and disappeared into the night. So soon the bishop was unaware because he was fast asleep. The, the others, Madame Magloy and Mademoiselle Baptistine were not aware of what Valjean had done. Unfortunately for Valjean he was spotted by the local police and arrested. However, when they took Valjean to return the bishop's silver, they were all astounded. They were taken aback. They were surprised. They were puzzled. They were perplexed. The simple term would be alarmed. They were surprised. Surprised at what? surprised at what the bishop had said in reply and the behavior of the bishop, the kind behavior of the bishop. They weren't expecting that. They had not expected the bishop would behave in such a contrasting manner, contrasting to their expectation just the opposite of what they had expected. So they were taken aback, they were surprised. How could the bishop behave in that manner, in that kind manner, when he was supposed to uh, very fervently, very strongly condemn, blame, and want the police to arrest Valjean for having stolen from him. Uh, the bishop said he had given Valjean the cutlery and also the silver candlestick. So he claimed that Valjean had not stolen from him. He wasn't a thief. He hadn't committed any crime. Instead, he said that he was the one who had given it to him. The police knew very well the truth. Everybody else did. But the bishop denied that Valjean had stolen from him. That was the act of kindness which the bishop displayed when the police had got Valjean to the bishop's house with a motive to return the bishop's silverware and the candlesticks. Uh, the police in the picture you see in conversation with the bishop, what did they, 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 they say to each other? The police said, we thought he had stolen the silver. No, the bishop said, I gave it all to him, very calmly and gently, assuring to the police that Valjean was innocent, he had stolen. It was he who had given Valjean the silver, which was found in his bag. Uh, Valjean, you see in the text, Valjean, and the police all looked at the bishop in disbelief. They knew what the truth was. So they were incredulous. They couldn't believe what they had heard. 
It was very difficult for them to believe what the bishop was doing. When the police saw he was serious, when the police realized that the bishop wouldn't accept the fact that Valjean had stolen, instead he asserted, he made it very clear to uh, the police that he was the one to have given it. Having no other option, the police had to leave and let free Valjean. So Valjean was bewildered as well as the police. Bewildered means they were all taken aback and surprised much beyond their understanding. And Valjean was full of gratitude. He was really thankful. He had that expression on his face of being thankful towards the bishop for what he had done. Why was the bishop being so kind to him? A thief, he, he questioned himself in his heart. Why was the bishop being kind to him when he had stolen, when he was actually a thief in this case? So, in the picture, the final picture, you see uh, the bishop in conversation after the police had left uh, with Valjean. And what did he say? I have bought your soul and given it to God. And what did it mean? He said that he had paid to buy Valjean.